Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today, as it seems like has been the usual lately, we have so much to talk about. So we'll just go ahead and get started. First of all, I would like to welcome all of our Let's Go family members. It is really great to have you all here with us. And also a big welcome to everyone who is new. We are really glad that you came. If anyone here hasn't subscribed yet, we would love it if you would please subscribe to our channel. I know that it will help us out and it will also, I think, um, be the beginning of something new and wonderful in your life. We have an amazing Let's Go family here who shares so much really helpful experience and information and uh, we have a lot of fun here together as well. If you have never, um, if you're new here or you haven't been yet, we do our live every Monday night. So tonight it will be at 9 p.m. Eastern Time and um, we answer everyone's questions. We talk about cruising. We're going to talk about some of the things that we're doing to get ready to go on our upcoming Mediterranean cruise as well as lots of other things that are going on right now so um, please join us if you can so the first thing that I want to talk about is one of our Let's Go family members started the conversation with asking if they are still doing random testing on arrivals in Canada. And so I asked, um, I put that question out there um, and asked some other people and they were so kind to reply and say that yes, they are still doing random COVID testing on passengers arriving into Canada. And so with that knowledge, um, I thought about this and really how it applies to our Let's Go family. And so right now, a lot of the cruises that we have got that our people would be flying into Canada for are the ones that are then heading up to Alaska. And so you have heard me say, that um, once you dock, once you dock in Vancouver, and then you're going to head home, if you're going to fly home, you have to have a negative COVID test to enter the United States. Princess just recently, like at the end of last week, announced that they are no longer going to be supplying that COVID test for people that need one to fly back home again. So everyone has to get their own. So be aware that they have, you can either take with you, as we've talked about before, those tests, the Abbott Laboratory ones that you can order from EMED or from Optum. You just do it with a healthcare provider online. You can do that in your stateroom if you would like before you disembark, or they've got lots of testing available at the Vancouver airport. However, another thought that I have had, if you don't want that worry in your life, I have said, you know what, you can fly out of Seattle to go home. Just take that Princess shuttle right from Vancouver over across the border. It's a land crossing, no COVID test required, and then fly home from Seattle. With the knowledge that they are also doing random COVID testing flying in to Canada, you might want to consider just flying in and out of Seattle. It makes it so much easier. They've got the Princess shuttle that one of our Let's Go family members pointed out works so nice when you're crossing the border there because you can use the HOV lane. The buses get through much more quickly than like a a car would because the lines are longer, but then um, you don't have to worry about a test. You don't have to worry about random testing. And um, I just want to say that since maybe it sounds like I'm crazy worried about testing positive, I'm not crazy worried, but with how much COVID we know is going around, um, you can be asymptomatic and um, be just fine and not even know that you have COVID and then you get tested and then you test positive and you miss your whole trip whereas if everybody else who is asymptomatic is on the ship and having a wonderful time. That's kind of the way that I look at it. And so um, if I were going to go on an Alaska cruise, I would definitely be flying in and out of Seattle. Or if I were, um, you know, doing the southbound and you're going to just end in Vancouver, you know, coming from Fairbanks or Anchorage, where you board there in Whittier and coming down, I would definitely get my flights out of Seattle. And if I had to call and change them, I would. And so... Um, I'm just putting that out there for all of you. I try to give you good information, things to think about, what might really be helpful with you. Along with that, I was just gonna tell everybody, Gordon and I got our second booster on Saturday, and today is Monday, it's May 9th, and um, everything went really good with it. We just went and got ours at Costco. They take walk-ins, you can make an appointment, but they also take walk-ins. It went super smoothly. We didn't feel quite um, good yesterday, but, um, we're feeling perfect today, so um, it was worth it to us. The next thing um, I wanted to remind you all is if you are wondering when you can get your booster, um, 
the CDC now says that if you are over 50, you can get your COVID vaccine within four months of getting your, your second booster within four months of getting your previous booster. And so um, just wanted to let you know that we made sure that we got ours. Um, we were going to get it anyway, but I wanted to make sure that we had it for upcoming Mediterranean cruise just to make sure that we are um, have as much immunity as possible. The next thing that I wanted to talk to you about really quick is last week, um, you know, I did my video about the things that I was thinking about so that I'm prepared so that we can get home from our cruise if we end up testing positive or just things to have to think about um, just so that we're prepared for any eventuality. I am planning to go on this cruise and hope that everything goes smoothly uh, with no COVID, <laughs> but I do wanna um, just add something here. So I mentioned in my video that several people had told me that they had tested positive, um, like not tested positive on the ship, but either done their own testing or they had stayed in the port city that they were to a little longer, done some sightseeing, and then when they had gone, gone to do their COVID test to return to the United States, they had tested positive. And so they just stayed and sightseed a little longer to use up um, the amount of time that they require that you um, wait between when you test positive and when you can get that certificate of recovery. And um, that I wasn't quite sure what we would do if we were in that situation. And so some people left comments and um, I get it. Some people said, you know, I couldn't believe that you would travel around and you know, when you knew that you were positive. So that made me look at what some of the restrictions are in some of the countries over there. So um, I looked at um, the United Kingdom, which we know has been wide open for a while. And in the United Kingdom, they say that if you are asymptomatic or have mild symptoms, you do not have to quarantine. That's the rules there. And so I looked that up. And so since we are going to um, be getting off the ship in Barcelona, I thought, well, I want to know what the rules are there because that's where we would test positive because we're going to stay an extra day. Um, uh, and fly home. We disembark Saturday. We're going to sightsee all day Saturday and come home on Sunday. And so I thought I better know what's going on there. And in Spain, as of March 28th of 2022, they say that if you're asymptomatic or have only mild symptoms, you are not required to quarantine in their country. So I just um, felt like I should add that. Um, if I decided to go looking around and not be quarantined because that's the rule there. Of course I would wear a mask. Of course I would stay away from people. It's never my intention to make anyone else sick. <laughs> and so I just wanted to let you know that and let you know what the rules are in these countries. There are lots more European countries over there and if I wanted to go to them, I would probably check and see. But um, I would just wanted to let you know that I did not mean that in a dishonest way at all. Not at all. The next thing we're gonna talk about is um, the Crown Princess just restarted her um, sailings again um, up to Alaska and we have had some people talking about it on our Facebook group. So if you are not a member of our Facebook group, it's just called Let's Go Travel Tips. You just go over and request to join and then my husband lets you in. Um, it's an amazing group. You know what? You all always surpass my expectations. I just want to say that. We have um, lots of Let's Go family members there and they share everything from beautiful photos of the places that they're visiting and I love when you put up a photo that includes you so that I get to put a face with a name but um, they include lots of beautiful photos lots of great tips things that they're learning along the way and people are so gracious to answer each other's questions and um, it just people that yeah you guys are awesome you really help each other out a lot so we've been having a conversation there about the crown princess and Amanda is on our let's go family member is on the crown princess right now and so she mentioned right off she says they are on their airport on their way to the airport to fly to seattle for the may 7th so that would have been saturday uh, crown princess sailing she says we just received an email from princess saying that the itinerary has been changed again now they're going to stop in ketchikan but not in juno or icy straight point she said they are very dis um very disappointed, but of course it's too late to change your travel plans. Princess is offering an additional 20% future cruise credit, so that's 
really nice, as well as the $100 onboard credit. And so um, we had heard of, of some of the itinerary changes on the Crown Princess, as you know, because they were having an engine problem. And um, now it sounds like it's something else is wrong as well, or instead something. And so, um, well, I guess they were doing engine maintenance. Um, but now it's something else um, with that, or I don't know exactly. But um, so their itineraries have been changed again. And then um, later on, someone posted that they are hearing troubles um, with people not having hot water and their toilets are having a hard time flushing. And from what I have read on here, it sounds like it's just in different places on the ship. Um, Amanda was so gracious to comment when people posted that. She said so far it's been great for them. She, is, she has heard that some are having issues with their toilets and hot water, but they haven't had any problems at all where they are on the ship. Theirs are working great. She said the staff have been wonderful. I felt sorry for the staff at the excursion desk yesterday as it was obviously crazy busy and I'm sure that they must have had a hard time dealing with some of the disappointed people. Luckily, they went to the excursion desk um, really early, just right after they got on before the lines got super long. And I love that she adds, they have made some wonderful friends already and are having a great cruise. And so thank you very much, Amanda. It sounds like, um, you know, I, I know that the crew does their very best. I know that about them. And I think that sometimes there are just things that come up that you can't help and that they resolve as quickly as they can. And um, so I'm just throwing that out there. I hope you all have a wonderful cruise. I really do. I appreciate that you all seem to pack your patience and are just glad to be there. I think that's really the only way to handle these things and stay happy. And uh, that 20% future cruise credit will be great to apply to another cruise sometime. So I wanted to let you all know about that. Then we have got someone else who is going to be sailing on the Grand Princess coming up and they are wondering if there are a drinking water station to refill people's water bottles. And so I just wanted to put out there and maybe some of you could comment who have been on the ships very recently. Historically, like before COVID, they always had an area over in the buffet area where you could go get your own glass of water and it was just like, you know, the little spigot thing that comes out and you turn it on, you fill up your glass and you're done. Every once in a while I would see people filling up their water bottles there. I always thought that was really questionable because that's not what it's made for. The appropriate way really to do that is to fill up glasses of water and just step aside or take it over to your table and pour those glasses of water individually into your water bottle and then um, set those aside as dirty glasses. And so um, if that is still available, I noticed that when we were on, um, I remember on the Majestic last August um, to Alaska, I don't think that they had that area open, but I honestly can't remember on um, the other sailings. So if anybody can comment who is sailing right now, if they've got that open in the buffet or if they've made anything else available to fill up your water bottles, um, please do talk about that. Um, sometimes, I hope this is okay, I'll just tell you. Sometimes if I want to fill up my water bottle, we always buy the water bottle package, but that's not as much water as we drink the whole time we're on board. And so sometimes um, I just fill it up at the tap in the bathroom and um, it tastes fine. I've never gotten sick. It's safe water um, and it's been just fine. So sometimes I've done that, but that would only fit like, I just like smaller water bottles. I don't have the really bigger ones and there's no way you could fill that up there, but um, you could use the glass that are in your room though and do that. So I'm just putting that out there in case it's helpful. Anybody has anything else to add in the comments, that would be great. And then um, she also asked if you have to do a COVID test for the land part of your um, trip. Um, you don't. No, nope, they do not require a test for the land part of your um, cruise tour. And then we heard from Kelly. This is fun from Alaska as well. They are in Ketchikan and she sent me this just this morning. So that's where they are today. She said it's a beautiful sunny day. Wonderful cruise so far. I should add she's on the Majestic. They have 1,830 passengers and 1,000 plus crew. Um, on deck nine, one side is blocked off as the COVID deck. And um, she said that most people are wearing their mask indoors. She said the buffet is serving and the crew is there to make sure that you wash your hands before you enter. And she even pointed out that some of the crew members are double masked. And so um, 
there you go. That's what's pretty much going on the Majestic Princess. And she also said she got her future cruise credit. So I'm really happy about that. Thank you so very much, Kelly, for letting us know. Now we've had questions from another Let's Go family member about the sanctuary. And I always figure that if one person has the questions, lots do. So we'll just walk through this really quick here. Plus I needed your help. She wants to know if there are elite benefits for the sanctuary. And I looked and I don't think so, but if any of you who are elite and know about that could comment, that would be wonderful. She wants to know if there are special rates for the sanctuary on Panama Canal Day, and I don't believe so. I have never had um, heard of the sanctuary having special rates for any day. And then the, um, are the rates for the sanctuary for the entire cruise or for all sea days? You know what, the rates for the sanctuary are by day and they are actually by half a day. So you can book the sanctuary for all day on a set day, or you can book it for a half day. You can either book it for the morning or you can book it for the afternoon. And um, usually we book it for the afternoon and we do it on a sea day or else on a day that we know that the port day, the port part of the day is super early and then we'll be back on board by noonish. That's what we do. And so um, it works really nice. It's $20 a person per half day and that's just for a regular lounge chair. Um, I think it's $40 a day for a cabana for a half day, and so it would be $80 a person for a cabana for all day long. But um, you just have to zip up there, and I'll attach my video about this, and I could also attach our embarkation day one in the Caribbean Princess because I showed you right how to get there right from when we embarked because it's first come, first serve, and it fills up really quick. And so anybody who is staying on like for a back-to-back, -back, they have first choice, which is appropriate it they um, can go book it before you run on the ship and so um, you um, just zip up there and sign up for whatever um, days that you want so that's how that works or half days whatever it is you'd like um, I also wanted to talk about and our let's go family member Dave he is so kind um, he put in the comments he said I think it would be helpful to hear your take on the problems that princess is having with the medallion app and their computer systems and so for those of you that have been here for a while, um, I think that you know that I am just as frustrated as the rest of you when it comes to the Medallion Class app. Um, last year when we were just going to go on our first cruise and then um, back with, since the restart and then a few times since when there have been updates, I have done videos about how to do this, that, and the other with the Medallion Class app. When the Medallion Class app is working, it is world class. It is a game changer for cruising. It is remarkable. The, the idea is excellent. The execution is what lags. And um, I will say sometimes it works perfectly smoothly. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. And I would say most of the time it is somewhere in between. Um, we went on our cruise, for example, um, in January and my app worked just great. It was awesome. It worked great before that. It worked great on the cruise. A couple of weeks after we got home, I wanted to look at it again. So I opened it and it would not open. It would not let me log in with my email and my password. And when I entered the booking number for our next cruise, it brought up crazy information. It didn't even know who I was. It had um, like funny, a funny picture that was not even mine. It was crazy. And it was that way for like two months. And I called um, Princess repeatedly. You can call 1-800-PRINCESS. And I think it's option two that is for the Medallion Class app help. And they agreed with me. And he even said, we got servers down. We've got all this trouble. It's going to be a while until your app works again. And so they know. They know it's not working. And so um, I, if I were in charge of Princess, Princess doesn't know me from anybody, but if I were running a company and my stuff was working so poorly, I would be out there trying to... Um, trying to recruit people that are like the top of their game for making these things work. I'm not suggesting somebody at Princess isn't, but apparently there is a missing link because it's not working right. And so Dave, um, he said that they are part of a 40, um, 40 people who are gonna get on the Ruby on June 29th and like half their people can't even enter their information. So here's what I have to say to you. Don't worry about it. There's nothing you can do, it'll just make you mad. <laughs> and you can't resolve it. I would keep my eye on it and, um, you know, just keep your eye on it. You can check back with Princess, but um, 
I don't know what else to tell you. Just know that when you um, arrive for check-in, they still remember how it used to be. And maybe those of you who are new, it used to be that when you got to check-in, they'd sit you down. And then in order of the that you arrived or in order, um, like they would put the elite people in their area and the platinum people in their area and all of this. And then the rest of us would just sit there and um, they would call you up in the order that you arrived and you would go up to the little desk and they would check you in. And um, that's still what they do. Like if you have to get your um, medallion there, I know they don't ship medallions outside of the United States. Or if you're like on a back to back and you don't have your medallion yet, whatever. Um, they still just do that. You can still just go right up there and um, give all your information. If your credit card's not linked, they link it there to your onboard account. Um, it's no big deal. And it moves really quick because there's not near so many people that have to go on that way. And so don't be panicked. Just get there. If, I, if, I, if it was me, I would get to the port around 10. And um, the earliest embarkation time is usually like 11 or 11.30. And oh, here, I well, it doesn't matter. I was gonna look and tell you what time ours is and we're group A out of Rome. But um, I would just get there early. You'll be there early. You'll be um, ahead of the game to get checked so that you'll be able to get on as early as is possible. They'll check you in that way. I wish that I knew better how to tell you what to do. Um, when you do get on board, if your app has not worked up to that point, definitely go to customer service and see if they can do anything from there. I have had some Let's Go family members say that once you are on board, there's something that they can do to make it work. And I, why they can't tell you how to do that over the phone beforehand, I don't know. But um, definitely go do that and see if they can get it working for you because it is really sweet to be able to just um, be sitting in the lounge chair and open your app and order a drink to be brought to you or food, whatever it is you want or in your stateroom. And if they still can't get it working there, you can use the stateroom TV to order anything you want. And because you still have your medallion, you can be in your stateroom and order the food that you want to eat sitting out on deck somewhere or your drink and then leave your stateroom once you've ordered it and go to wherever you want to be and they'll bring it to you in that place. Okay, I'm sorry that I don't have a better answer for you, but that's just where we are. And when my app wasn't working, I just decided I wasn't gonna worry about it. And then it just started working, but it took a few months for it to start working again. And so um, I'm hoping it just at least stays working until um, we get done with our upcoming cruise. But that's the best I've got for you. Um, I know that you have probably all, you know, we always tell people, try logging in with your booking number, try deleting the app and reinstalling the app. Um, all of those things were not working for me when I was trying to do it either. So if you haven't tried that, try that. Otherwise, don't panic about it, okay? I hope that helps somebody up there to not worry, um, out there to not worry quite so much. Alrighty, the next thing that I wanted to talk about here really quick is the luggage service. Princess has a luggage forward service. They partnered with a company that they will come to your home, pick up your luggage, and you don't see it again until it is in your stateroom. Or if you have an Alaska land tour, you don't see it until it is in your first stop, the hotel that you come to first. And so um, I'm putting the link under this video and um, you can click on that and then just kind of navigate their site. It will show you everything that you can send. You can send your luggage, you can send your golf clubs, you can send your skis if you're going somewhere to go skiing and you can, um, they also have the service that if you have too many boxes to take to college in your car or whatever, you can have them ship boxes for you. I'm just throwing that out there. But um, I just um, wanted to let you know that they do have a basic um, charge that they've got. And our Let's Go family member Kay asked about this in our live last week, and I just have gotten to it. So you can have, so for like a small bag, um, for 25 pounds, it's $89. For your standard bag, which can be up to 50 pounds, it's $99. If you've got an oversized bag, it can be up to 75 pounds, and that's $149. And then um, I didn't click down for everything for like your golf bags and your skis, but it's there as well. But um, it's, it's a very handy, I would say it's even most handy. If you've got like a bunch of clothes, 
that um, and you're going to be touring or doing something else before you're going to go on your cruise and then you just don't need anything in that luggage until you get on board the ship that's a really handy way to do it and they will do it not only for cruises departing from the United States but they will send it all over the world for you so you can have a cruise departing in Europe or the Caribbean wherever and they will send it there for you and so I think it sounds like a really good service and for those of you that need it I say give it a try I've heard of people use it and really like it but I have not used it myself and so um, just wanted to let you all know about that and once again that link will be underneath this video here and then I've just got a couple of more updates here for you the last one I guess is Rick Rick is on um, Royal Caribbean's Ovation of the Seas and he said he is disappointed in the food service and you know I have heard this complaint um, he said that the buffet is only open 6 to 8 30 for dinner and then they close and they also close the fish and chips place and the hot dog place and also the two cafes at five and so they're not open very late so either you need to eat your dinner earlier at the buffet if you want to eat at the buffet or else you have to eat in a restaurant and so um, I've heard a lot of people say that it didn't used to be that way quite so much before COVID so if anybody wants to comment about that that would be great to hear but they're definitely closing the buffet earlier and I have even heard on some ships that the buffet is not even open for dinner time and so um, if any of you others are any on any other Royal Caribbean ships and want to tell us about that we would be happy to hear because I think it will help people who have got cruises scheduled on that uh, kind of know what to expect he said I like this the desserts are better on princess as is the buffet they also need more people working at every food station so that was just a super fast update and so Rick Rick thank you so very much for sending that to us so that is just a quick overview we had a lot to talk about I would love to hear your comments back on any of the things that we talked about I think it would really help us all out to hear what you've got to say about it and um, if you appreciate these um, updates would you please give this video a thumbs up because that really does help us and hopefully we will see you all tonight at our live like I said it's at 9 p.m. Eastern time and um, we'll be waiting for you to show up with us so I'll be talking to you all again really soon you all take really good care God bless you love you bye bye